I think what Sam wanted to do was leverage, leverage every every cent of his customers to make money for himself, and then put the money back. I I don't know if the last part is true, um, because it's always a slippery slope. On, on YouTube, there are a lot of lawyers, lawyers that discuss this in different topics that are focused. Uh, there are lawyers that are focused on divorce, like uh, the lead attorney. TLA. Shout out to TLA. There are also lawyers that focus on a particular group of people. Criminals that self-snitch. And... That group is usually represented or not represented. Let's put it this way. Bruce Rivers. Bruce Rivers is a great lawyer commentator on YouTube who basically talks about crime cases. He's a crime lawyer. Very, uh, very funny. He gives very funny commentary. Great commentary on, on a lot of um, cases. This particular case, he chimed in as well. So let's see what Bruce has to say relating to the Robin Hood and the share story. Robin Hood. He's trying to claim oh, those are my assets because I need money for my legal fees. These lawyers who are taking the case. I, they better be awfully careful about sourcing the funds that they are um, charging their client because if those funds come from one of the victims or can be traced back to the victim come, or into a pot of money that, that can be traced back to a victim, those lawyers are going to have to cough back up those fees. There's a thing called clawback. <clears throat> so when you... Should they really be focusing on that as well, RJ? You're on mute. I said focusing on what? Focusing on that they're not being paid. That's the tough part right here. Because what money is SBS money and what isn't? Yeah. So... Um... This is actually one of the tough things about, so I'm not saying this is white collar crime, but white collar criminal cases. You have to prove, you have to be able to prove that a dollar, for example, a dollar was obtained in an illegal manner and turned, uh, let's say, and, and, and washed through a company, you know, to, to bring it in the, in the white economy mm -hmm. or the official economy. Oh, nice. So so that's that's gonna be very difficult to prove, definitely. What's the real question is the real question here is who has the burden of proof? So who needs to prove that the money um, belongs to either SBF or the investors. The one that needs to prove it, if it's the, if it's the, if it's F, F, uh, S, SBF that needs to prove that the money is his, he would need to prove that, you would need to prove how he obtained the money. Mm -hmm. A majority of time, it's the party that is claiming something that would need to prove it. So the party that is claiming that the money isn't Sam Bankman Fries would be the one that need to prove it. Okay. Uh, we need to we need to so we need to see on we need to see who is who so which party has the burden of proof. But if it's the other party, if it's not Sam uh but if it's the other party, maybe the SEC or whatever the, the the other party, whoever the other party is, then that party would need to prove it, and it 
think it's a very difficult thing to prove. Especially, and this is like chicken or egg, because there is no... <laughs> no. Accounting is terrible. Oh, my God. Yeah. You might be right on that one. Yeah. You have a point. Now, now uh, I have to say, that's why I always say I'm not familiar with... Um, I'm not familiar with uh, American law as such. But I can tell you that, so let's say, in other legal systems, it's the party that... So if you're a director... So, no. So there's a concept called the assumption of guilt. So with regards to situations like that, this, this... It says, so the law states that the director is in charge um, or at least should make sure that the accounting is done in a proper way because the accounting needs to reflect the actual situation of the company. If the director doesn't do that, then there is an assumption of guilt. There is an assumption that the director um, is liable and should pay for for uh, let's say damages costs yeah. uh, I don't know to what extent this will this will pre play a role in this case because as I've already mentioned or, or I already said I'm not familiar with um, the Amer so, so US law in this uh, in, in, the, in cases like this but that's usually how it goes. Because if you don't have that assumption of guilt, then everyone will do whatever they want with the money. And then you won't be able to prove anything because the accounting wasn't done properly. Well, great point. So I have nothing to add. Let's see whatever, what else uh, Bruce has to say relating to the movement of the money that are going on right now. So he took $546 million from the hedge fund, Alameda, and they bought a stake in Robinhood. So that's a half a billion dollars, right? And then he then he took money from FTX and then tried to pump up uh, Alameda. In other words, I'm taking he's just he's taking pots of money from people that don't belong to him and doing whatever he wants with them. And that's what Andrew Ross Sorkin was saying is, you know, if I work at the bank and I take out a thousand dollars and it's not my money, it's not my account, but I just take it out of the cash drawer and then I bring it back, bring back eleven hundred dollars tomorrow. Well, I still stole the money for that time period. Right. So he is absolutely fucked. And I don't mean that lightly. These are big numbers that we're dealing with here. Now, yeah, it's kind of crazy if you think about it. I think so. It's an assumption. It's a theory I have relating to uh, uh, Sam. Okay, I think what Sam wanted to do was leverage. Leverage every every cent of his customers to make money for himself, and then put the money back. I I don't know if the last part is true, um, because it's always a slippery slope. What you see is oftentimes where there's theft and and fraud, it doesn't start with big amounts. It starts with small amounts, and every time you see that you can get away with a small amount. You get greedy and try to go, you know, to yeah. look for bigger fish, uh, fishes to fry. 